All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk about a function that's so crazy that it is continuous at every irrational number, but discontinuous at every rational number. And this is called Thomae's function, which should not be confused with Stromae because à la rondance. Dum, 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 dum. Um, anyway, I want to emphasize this function is again super crazy because there is of course a function that's zero at every rational number and one at every irrational number. This one is discontinuous everywhere. But the function we'll talk about is continuous again at the um, irrational numbers but discontinuous at the rational numbers. And it's defined as follows. So let me first write down the formula. So f of x, if x is irrational, it is 0. 0 if x is irrational. And if x is rational, then uh, without loss of generality, you can write x as p over q where q is positive and there are no common factors. So p and q have no common factors. And um, in that case, we define f of x to be 1 over q. So that is well defined because every fraction has a unique reduced fraction, if you'd like. So for instance, what is f of 1? Well, that is f of 1 over 1. So here q is 1, and that becomes 1. So 1 over 1, which is 1. But also f of 2. Well, it's f of 2 over 1. So that becomes f of, this 2 becomes 1, so 1. Okay. That becomes 1 over 1, which is 1. And in fact, you'll see at every integer, the function is 1. So even at 0, the function is 1, because 0 is 0 over 1. And now let's continue. How would f of 1 half? Well, f of 1 half, 1 over 2, so q is 2, so it is 1 half. But how about f of 3 halves? Well, p over q, so this becomes 1 over q, which is 1 half. And similarly, f of 5 halves is also 1 half. So at the uh, half numbers, so not integers, but purely fractions with 1 half, the function is 1 half. Well, and similarly, you see f of 1 third, for instance, that's 1 third. And then f of 2 thirds, it's also 1 third. Da, da, da. So basically, kind of becomes this weird thing here. In fact, sometimes it's called the uh, rain droplet function because it kind of looks like a rain droplet. So kind of like this. And by the way, there's a, there's a better picture on Wikipedia. I highly recommend you to look at it. And I'm claiming this function is so crazy that it is continuous at every irrational number and discontinuous at every rational number. So claim. So f is... First of all, let's do the easier part. It's discontinuous at every um, x naught rational, and it is continuous at every irrational number, r without q. All right, so how do we prove this? Well, one, as I said, is much easier to prove because all we need to do, we need to find, so we want to find xn, some sequence xn converging to x0 with f of xn not converging to f of x0. And remember, in this first part, x0 is rational. So consider, for instance, xn Simply any sequence of irrational numbers converging to x naught, and the 
xn like this. And well, for instance, what you can do is simply xn is x0 plus square root of 2 over n. Okay, so take again the rational number and add a very tiny irrational number to it. And the point is, this is irrational. Why? Because if it were rational, then xn minus x0 times n would be rational minus rational, so rational, rational, and then we would get that square root of 2 is rational, and that would be a contradiction. So for sure this is irrational, so by definition, f of, um, so by definition, f of xn, that is 0, because this is irrational, and well, 0 converges to 0, but this is definitely not f of x0, because remember, f of x0 is 1 over something, and therefore positive. This is why the function is discontinuous at every rash rational number. And now let's show the slightly harder thing, but not too bad. Let's show that it's continuous at every, uh, rational, uh, at every irrational number. So show f is continuous at x0, which is r minus q. This is a bit harder because we have to find, in theory, we would have to find you know, a sequence, any sequence converging to x0 has the property that f of that sequence converges to f of x0, which is too complicated, so instead let's do it with epsilon deltas. So, let epsilon be given so epsilon be given and then choose n large enough such that 1 over n is less than epsilon and you'll see why we need this so choose capital n be large enough such that 1 over n is less than epsilon. Now, consider the following. So we want to choose our delta very wisely. Because essentially what we want to show, we want to show around x0, the numbers are pretty close in some sense. Uh, here's what, what I mean. Um, so, we know that x0 is irrational. In particular, what we can do, we can let delta to be so small that there are no integers in that interval. So, so let delta be so small. so small so that uh, there are no integers integers in uh, x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta of course we can do that because you know uh, if delta is small enough, there are just finitely many integers in that interval, so just choose it even smaller. Let's see, x0 is close to 2. Well, choose that interval smaller so that 2 isn't in there anymore. But here's a cool thing. Well, because you can do it for integers, you could also do it for half integers. For instance, if there's a 3 half there, choose delta so small so that the 3 half isn't there anymore. And there are only finitely many in half integers in that interval anyway. That's why you can do that. So now, let delta be even smaller. So that there are no half integers. So if you want, there are no fractions. of the form, if you want p over q or p over 2. Okay. 
where p is an integer, so where p is in z. In uh, x naught minus delta and x naught plus delta. Well, and the point is now you can just continue. Just let delta be so small so that there are no fractions of the form p over 3 in that interval. So small so there's no thing of p over 3. And well, of course you can't do this infinitely many times because then you might have a problem. However, you can do this up to capital M. So there are no uh, fractions of the form p to capital M. Uh, with p is in z. So the point is, in that interval, there are no integers, no half integers, up to no fractions of the form p over capital N. So there are no fractions of the form p over q, where q is 1, 2, 3, up to n. So hence, Hence, in the interval x0 minus delta and x0 plus delta, I would say almost uh, assume it's in reduced form, uh, there are no fractions of the form p over q, where q is less than or equal to capital I at least in reduced form, and now that's actually very good, because remember what is epsilon delta, we need to show that if x minus x naught is less than delta, then f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon, but now, then this is delta, but now if the distance between x and minus x naught is less than delta, and x is of the form p over q, which I can assume reduced. Well, could x be an integer? Well, no, because we assume there are no integers in that interval. Could x be of the form p over 2? No, because we just got rid of them. Could x be of the form p over 3? Also no. And in fact, x cannot be of the form p over q, where q is less than or equal to capital N. So it must be of the form p over q, where q is greater than capital N plus 1. So by the above, in other words, x must have very large denominator. x is p over q, where q is if one strictly greater than capital N. But then what is f of x? Then f of x is, um, by definition, 1 over q. All right, however, what was f of x naught? Remember, I almost forgot, but remember that x naught is irrational. So f of x naught it's just zero by definition. So here's again such a beautiful proof. Uh, we get that f of x. So uh, the difference between f of x and f of x naught, that is the difference between 1 over q and 0. But again, this is positive, so this is 1 over q. But remember, we assume q is greater than capital N. So 1 over q is less than 1 over capital N. And remember, we chose capital N to be less than epsilon. So in fact, f is continuous at x naught. At x naught. How cool is that? So it's this function that is discontinuous, you know, and then um, at uh, every, every rational number and continuous at every irrational number. Moreover, there's a really cool feature of this function, because remember, it is a continuous at irrational numbers, but discontinuous at rational numbers. Therefore, the set of discontinuities of this function is countable because q is countable, and therefore, by the Lubeck criterion for integrability, 
since the set of discontinuities is countable, the function is actually integrable. So how cool is that? And not only that, it is nowhere differentiable as well. And, and that follows at rational numbers because it's discontinuous there. And then I think the other one follows from what's called Hurwitz theorem. That's also another cool thing. Uh, all right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.